I say, well, you know, I get it. It's all about money and power. They want to stay in power. It's okay, but you want to power. destroy the country while you're staying in power? What power are you going to have? I'm pessimistic about the direction of America. I don't know if we can be fixed at this point. This one right here may trigger some of you. Already know it. This right here may trigger some of you because you're about to realize that you were wrong. Okay? But it's okay. We've all been wrong before. I voted for Biden. I apologize many times, so I ain't about to apologize again. I'm done apologizing. But you're about to see something that's going to blow your daggone mind. We got my man Patrick Bet David over at Valuetainment, PBD Podcast. These guys always get down to the nitty gritty when it comes to the conversations that they have and the people that they have on their platform. And I really want y'all to see exactly what's happening. See? Let's get to something that's, to me, the most serious issue that we're facing right now. This whole investigation with him and his family. With, with like Biden family. and Hunter Biden. Yes. Yeah. Let, let me tell you something. I had 18 LLCs, Panamanian companies, 18 of them. All of them, None of them had a business. It was just a company that I needed to open up a bank account. That was it. Okay. We were washing money, shell companies. Okay. I am telling you, this is a racketeering indictment waiting to happen. There's no question about it. There's no, there's no function to any one of these companies. He's funneling money through different, the same way I did it, 100%, exactly the way I did it. And with me, I'm just taking money from the government, all right? I'm stealing tax money. Okay, I went to jail for that. Listen, when somebody's telling you exactly how the game is played, just, just take it in. Listen, all right? Question their motives, obviously. You question well, why are they bringing this information to me? Is it for truth or is it to take down whoever they're trying to pit this information on? But you need to use your own gift of discernment to understand whether or not they are trying to mislead you or they're actually trying to help you. So just listen to this gentleman right here. He's telling his testimony right here. But this guy is influence peddling. This, what else could it be, Patrick? When people open their eyes and just look at it, what else can it be? Reporters have the nerve to say, well, we can't track any money that went directly to Biden. So what? So what did it didn't go to him? It went to his family. Even if he didn't get a penny, it went to his family. He did it for, to, to benefit the Biden family. This is, and then, you know, I'm saying it too, and people have brought this out. You know, we got a Chinese balloon flying over the country, taking all these surveillance, you know, classified information that we have. This guy's backing down every which way. I mean, this is dangerous stuff for America. Yeah, you know what's going to happen, Michael? This is what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to protect him 100%. until he is no longer needed then he will be a useful idiot, and then they'll destroy him, and they'll all turn on him. And just so you know, um, Patrick Bet David is speaking to the gentleman that was just now talking. His name is Michael Franzese. Feel free to look him up so that you can understand exactly who this gentleman is. Then decide whether or not his his words that he's you know given to us right now um, we should actually believe it or not. And they'll all good morning, Shay Brown. All tell the stories about how bad he was and what he they'll 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 do to him what they did to Andrew Cuomo. That's how quickly they'll flip on the guy once they mm -hmm. cannot use him anymore. Because right now, you know, they don't want him to run. And he's being punished. St Stephanie Rule is her name? Is that her name? Stephanie she asked Rule, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, America doesn't want you to run. In other words, like um, there's no Fortune 500 company right now that's trying to recruit a CEO that's 82 years old that's going to be 86 at the end of their terms. What makes you think you're qualified to do this? Experience. Uh, this, that, watch right. me. He's yeah, watch me. So, <laughs> but the but the point is, Democrats don't want this guy. Right. So if he goes against Democrats and he still runs, the moment they're able to get rid of him, whatever way they do, they're gonna turn on him like this. They are, and the reason why that they don't want him want him to run too is because they know he can't win. That's it. They don't want him to run because they fear losing the, the president, um, the, the, the White House, who, whoever runs against them. They know that he will not win. And if they and, and they know that in order for him to win, they're going to have to do a whole bunch of nasty tricks. They're going to have to pull the wool over everybody's eyes all over again in a way that you've not seen before. And they're not ready for all that. They, they don't want that to happen. This dude... Nobody likes him. I would probably bet that a lot of people who are mad that he's running again are people who probably didn't even vote for him the first time. They just didn't want Trump to win. In no time. He's not Bill Clinton. They'll turn on him in no time. And they'll, they'll then share the stories of, yeah, well, you know, all these investigations. Nobody knew. And then all of a sudden the truth came out. And it was, 
you know, somebody like this. And, you know, same thing they did to Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo was supposed to be the next president at one point. Yeah. Everybody in America is like, yeah, he looks more presidential than Donald Trump does. Look at the way he does his meetings every day in New York. And the next thing you know, um, no, he doesn't want to negotiate and work with us. Throw him under the bus. Let's replace him very quickly. Like this had happened. I don't get why the left don't want Biden to want run, though. And I'm being honest with you. It's, it's like it's not like he's a good president. I don't think he is. That's one thousand percent. I don't think he's a good president. But they're able to force feed whatever ideas they want and funnel whatever they want him to do directly through him. They get to use him as a dag on puppet, and he'll do and say whatever they want. The same way that they dragged him to Howard University for him to say the greatest threat to homeland is white supremacy. And then he went on to give his own testimony of things that he do and have been doing for 80 years and acting as if it was somebody else. This dude was giving his own testimony as why as to why white supremacy is the biggest threat. And he was talking about himself the entire time and Somebody made him do that. They made him do that, man. This dude is not a strong president. And many nations are t- starting to turn away from us already. I'm just saying. But Patrick, how far has America sunk when you have a president that uh, that basically might have sold out the country and people are protecting him from that? The news media is protecting him from that. You know, where do you draw the line and say, wait a second, you know, I live here. I have kids here. This is my home. This guy is selling secrets to the foreign government, you know, or influence peddling. When do you draw the line? Has has America, look, you look at every major, major power, you know, throughout history. Why were they destroyed? Immorality, finances, and the military going to hell. And, and things are happening like that in this country. You know, with these great powers, they always, they always crumble from within first, you know, and I just can't understand. Look, I was a mob guy. Hey, before he goes on telling all his secrets about being a mob guy, please understand what he just now said. He just now pointed out every single thing negative that's happening within our country. Within. He's talking about the within first. And then what's, what, once it happens within, once our military is messed up, bruh, bruh, it can get, it can get bad for everyone. 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 I don't even care that we have uh, military bases in over 70 countries. At this point, from the moves we've been making over the last few years, under Biden, we are becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. And we need to make a course correction fast if we want to protect our families, the future of this nation, for real. It's crazy, man. Okay, I was on the street. I don't know guys on the street that would do what this guy is doing and what the left is doing. I don't get it. You know, what are they trying to accomplish? Is it all? I say, well, you know, I get it. It's all about money and power. They want to stay in power. Okay, but you want to destroy the country while you're staying in power? What power are you going to have at that point? I don't know. I mean, in my lifetime, I never thought I'd ever see a situation like we have right now. Look, the FBI, I always knew they were corrupt. But what were you seeing now? We saw in the Mueller report, you know, how they went along with all of this, how they instigated it, how they covered things up. Speaking of the Mueller report, someone just now sent me the Mueller report and asked me to read it. <laughs> I don't want to read it. I don't need to know no more BS that's happening in this daggone country. <laughs> I'm going to read it, though. I always knew that, but people would say, oh, you, you guys are criminals on the street. Okay. All right. So they, they pushed the envelope with us. Okay. You know, maybe you can justify it, even though I say this. Whenever you give the government power and allow them to break the law in order to get the lawbreakers, it's going to turn on you someday. And that's exactly what's happening. You hear that? Whenever you give the government enough power to break the law in order to catch the lawbreakers, it ends up flipping on you. Because they've already have, they have carte blanche to do whatever the hell they want to do anyway. We already know that people are not, for the stuff that Hunter Biden has done, the average Joe would have been arrested for tens of years. Think about it. For, for what has happened with, with, with Joe and what they are selling to other companies, I mean other countries, and when I accidentally say companies, but it's actually companies. Because every single country represents a company. They are companies. United States, to me, is a company. And we have been failing like a mug. We've been losing money. 
We have been losing power. We have been losing our stance on the um, world on the world stage, dude. That's that doesn't say a successful company to me. Sorry, it doesn't. There's a whole lot of infighting, regardless if it's conservatives against conservatives or liberals against liberals. The fact is, is Americans against Americans, and other companies, countries see this, and they are trying to figure out a good way to make connections with other companies so that they can, at the right time, the proper time, put their foot on our neck. Okay, exactly what's happening. But to, I never thought I would see it deteriorate to this degree. I mean, we're in a lot of trouble. I'm a very optimistic guy. My wife gets crazy with me. God, don't worry about it. No problem. We'll fix it. Everything's okay. I'm pessimistic about the direction of America. I don't know if we can be fixed at this point. See, sorry to keep on stopping this Francis guy, but that's me too. Like, it's nothing that shakes me. Nothing. I'm always, I always have a positive outlook on things regardless. Like, if we ain't, my wife gets on me for the same things. She'll be so worried and so concerned sometimes about some things that need to be squared away right away. And if it does not, all hell breaks loose in her mind. For me, I'm like, it'll work out. Don't worry about it. Don't trip. And even if it does fail, we good. We blessed. Relax. And that that comes off as condescending sometimes. <laughs> and I really don't mean it. I'm trying to be as positive as possible. But when it comes to me looking at what's going on in this country, bruh, I can't be as optimistic. So I get what he's saying. Other than the really border, Michael, what do you think the biggest issues are facing the country right now? If, 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 if what you're saying is true, that you've never seen the country like this and Biden's doing the worst job you've ever seen, the border... Clearly a mess, right? Well, Title Total 42 mess. just uh, expired Drugs. as a... Yeah. What else would you put in the, in the top of the list these days? Listen, I, I don't think this is a racist country. I think they're trying to divide us in a way that I've never seen before. This is not a racist country. Not at all. You know, not at all. Huge problem. The divisiveness in the country. And you know, it starts from the top. And it trickles down. I don't think it's a racist country, but it's a bunch of racist mofos in the country. All right. And a lot of people, it, it, and it all stems back to how the country started. That's that's it. And a lot of people are comfortable with that. And they want to celebrate certain things that was not right. And those people are racist as a mofo. And then you have, and I'm talking about the, the oppressors and the victims. All want things to just want to be like, ah, I hate you. I hate them because of that. What about 1619? They always go back. And because of that, they hold on to those things. And the evil, the evil that was within our forefathers and foremothers, <laughs> It transcends. It transcends generations. So there are people in this country that are racist as a mug. Do not fool yourself to believe that everything's all hunky dory and nobody's racist anymore and the country is not operating in this type of way. Trust me, people have made up their rules and some places have made up their laws in order to benefit only certain races, right? And that way, it's giving other people permission. You heard what he said about the government um, breaking the law to, to catch lawbreakers. And then it ends up becoming like, oh, it's a thing now. We can break the law. They end up doing it more and more and more. Well, people who were victimized by racism and white supremacy and slavery and whatnot are now starting to use those same exact rules and tactics in order to be racist themselves and they're loud about it and it's not it's, it's not producing anything positive at all so now people lean on that racism and it's a racist country and we can't do anything anyway no matter what we do we're, we're held down we're, we're bound by them and their racism that attitude is not led by fear it's like it's led by people who are opportunists. They want to put out a reason that's believable enough for to to I guess to support whatever demonic actions are about to come. Look at all of the protests that happened where people cars were being flipped over, burnt up, people were being abused and hurt and sometimes killed out there in the streets. Um, people's people's businesses were being broken into, stuff stolen all out of their businesses, small businesses to big businesses. We look at Walmart, Target, we look at small moms and pop stores who are being running and just everything's taken and just for the sake of well, well, we believe they wrong, so we want to show them how angry we are. 
We want to show them how hurt we are, so we got to hurt them too. But they're nothing but opportunists, and they're doing it under the guise of racism because they want to keep it alive, and it's dumb as hell. And that's all you hear, this inclusiveness. <laughs> Listen, you want the best people in office. You don't want to pe people in office because they're a different race or religion or creed or background. You want the best people there to do the job, you know? And now, I mean, because of inclusiveness, the, they're trying to make, you know, America look like the League of Nations. Okay, we agree with that. You can, you can, Patrick, you know this. You can succeed in this country no matter what. All right, maybe some people have a little, you know, they, they came up the different way. They didn't have the advantages. They didn't have, you know, uh, the advantages that some other people have. But you can still overcome that in America. Facts. This is a great country. Great. This is definitely greater than in most other countries. Absolutely. Great country. But what they're doing here, it, it, and it's all about money and power. They want to stay in power. That's why I think, I can't think of any other reason why he has opened up the southern border like this. When they try to give them the ability to vote, what are they going to tell them? Hey, you vote for Republicans, they're sending you out of here. You got to stay with us. That's it. Well, I will tell you this. What's happening in Texas, I think the Texas governor is sending people over to sanctuary cities. So thank you so much, Bowie. I appreciate that. So these governors are setting this country up for failure by using that chess move. And I'm going to tell you why. Because what happens is, it's, yeah, it's a nice slap in the face for these government, I mean, these governors to say, you know what? We told them the, that we need a, we need a border patrol. We need the walls to protect the border and all this other stuff. They just gonna come over here anyway. We're gonna bust them and over to New York. We're gonna take them over to D.C. We're gonna take them over to you know all these other sanctuary cities. Um, drop them right in the backyard of Kamala Harris in her in her neighborhood, right in her cul-de-sac. We're gonna take them right there. Well, what's gonna happen is that's exactly what Biden and um, Democrats want they actually want voters that's what they want that's why they don't want voters to have to be ID'd that's why they keep the borders open because right now the number two uh, minority well right behind white people used to be black people now it's Hispanics they are getting what they want the thing is though Hispanics are about that money they are opportunists they come in here to get that bread they they are here and our cousin went out there and they're doing a damn good job they got a they got a business already they got a car they got a truck already they got a they got a house already that we can go live in when we go over there they're making money they're making they're sending money back to their families we need to go over there they're being opportunists they're not running from danger like we claim that they are they're not but guess what when they come here if the democrats win and people are able to vote for president without having proper ID, they're going to allow them to vote and vote and vote and vote and vote, hoping that they will vote for Democrats. A lot of these people, man, I've seen, I've seen it. They, they got some sense too. They got some sense and it's pissing the Democrats off because a lot of them are saying that they support Trump. <laughs> Regardless of what he said, they, they understand that conservatives don't play as many games as the liberals do. Okay. I talked enough. If Texas turns blue, you'll never see another Republican in office. Never. If Texas turns blue, you'll yeah. never see another Republican no. in office. You got Florida. I mean, you got New York. You got Texas. You got California. Yeah, from an electoral college that? standpoint, it's going to be very hard to win if you don't have Texas. And that's what they're trying to do. And they keep saying, you keep seeing a slow drip where, you know, they keep saying, this is the year that, that Texas is turning blue. This is the year that Texas is turning blue. But they, mm -hmm. I, still, I, th I still think there's a five-point margin of victory but it's it used to be double digits and uh you, i think you're absolutely right you lose texas then you never know what will happen in these elections you lose texas everybody's coming over the whole damn country come on come on everybody yeah single de mayo single de mayo and we actually got it's not only hispanics that are coming I've seen by the boatload, Asian countries are starting to pour over and it looked like they are being sent out. Like, think about this. Think about this, guys. Just, I, I just want you to hear this out. Hear this out for a second. Did y'all see the march on the Capitol the other day where it was a whole bunch of white supremacists, a white supremacists? And everybody was like, man, those are the feds. Those are, you know, they're, people planted them there and they planted that. Of course they planned it. I, obviously they planned it in order to march in order to have a protest in the United States, you have to file for, um, have to ask for permission 
in order to protest in advance. So remember, like a couple of weeks ago, there was a video out of a whole bunch of Asian gentlemen. It looked like and all of them were all of them was in great shape too. <laughs> all of them was in phenomenal shape. And they were all coming over. And we were like, whoa, wow, are all of them dudes coming over here at the same time. And then we see the white supremacist march and everyone's got their faces covered up. And every single last one of them gentlemen are in great shape. No beards. You can see that through the mask. They had no beards, no nothing. Come on, man. It's more than just a coincidence. It's not a conspiracy theory. None of that. You just go look at it for yourself. Use your own damn voice of reasoning in, inside and try to understand for yourself. But at the end of the day, listen. Thank God for the blessings that we do have, and that's life, liberty, family, love, trees, birds, anything that you know that God created that is good, you thank God for. You just, you're just training yourself to show gratitude for the good because there's a lot of bad that's coming, and you want to be prepared, and you won't be prepared if you're always upset. You, you can, you know, that, that anger, that, that, that hurt, that Ah, that vitriol that you're always pissed off about. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't be pissed because you should, but use it properly. All right. That's all I'm saying. Because some bad is coming and you want to be ready. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to have the video link for this video. So for anybody that want to go watch the rest of this, feel free. 